Hi, this is Eric Prostowski. Welcome to another session of EP on EP. And I'm here today with someone I've known for decades who's done remarkable work in our field, Dr. Sammy Viskin. Welcome to the show. Sammy is the professor of uh, cardiology at the Tel Aviv Medical Center. And no surprise to you, Sammy, I'm going to ask you to talk about polymorphic VT and it's no structural heart disease. Big surprise, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I, I tell you what I'd like to, you to take us through. And for the, the listeners, um, I think if you get a chance, you want to read a paper that uh, Dr. Viskin wrote in Circulation 2021, where he goes into what we're going to, in much more detail, what we're going to try to cover today is, is, is the highlights. So Sammy, based on that, um, let's start with Bugatta. So again, I'm just going to hit a couple of these syndromes and you give us like the key point, key takeaways. So what is your acute and chronic management of, of a Brugada patient who's having arrhythmias? Okay, so uh, the arrhythmias of the Brugada patients, the uh, ventricular fibrillation events are tricky in the sense that they will not respond to the usual antiarrhythmic therapy that we weave for ventricular tachycardia. So um, lidocaine and amiodarone will hardly ever work, and those who go into um, a VF storm, it is important for physicians to know that the best drug to treat them at that point is isoproteranol, and you just start the infusion and you start pumping isoproteranol to increase the sinus rate to a rate of 120, 130, and usually that takes care of the uh, re-onset of ventricular fibrillation after you, you shock them. Once the, the patient is uh, stable, the best drug to continue with is by far quinidine therapy. And we have known that for now for many years. Um, and just as physicians have rare blood types in their hospital waiting for the rare patient with a rare blood type that will come and the need for retransfusion, they should keep the rare types even if they're never used, the same thing should be for quinidine. Quinidine is hard to get in many it areas. Get, it yeah. is very hard to get, and it's getting harder to get in the U.S. So hospitals should make sure they have quinidine in storage um, in the hospital because if a patient comes with a VF storm with you to Brugado with your VF, that would be a life-saving therapy for them. Okay, so you get them through that, Sammy. Um, ICD, I suspect, is something that will be... And then uh, where do you put ablation now in Brugada you, um, in your scheme of treating them? So now there's a new paper by Nadimani uh, in, uh, in circulation just came out with a very large series of very symptomatic patients with Brugada syndrome with, with uh, very large numbers of VF episodes. And they respond extremely well to ablation therapy. I don't think we have reached the point where you can ablate a patient and send him home without an ICD. Right. But that might come because the, the results, the, the chances of recurrence were, were fairly low. And um, I hope the next study will be a comparative study of quinidine versus ablation therapy in patients with who already have one, sim one, ev right. one event of, of ventricular fibrillation. Um, since a lot of people will have not used quinidine, and I know at my own hospital, I've admitted some patients to the hospital to start quinidine for other things, and I usually get a call from my team, how do I do this? Because you and I grew up in drugs before we had devices. Um, what dose do you usually recommend for quinidine? Well, so, so it depends, since, since for the... A patient with Brugada syndrome who had ventricular fibrillation, what you need is the highest doses that he can tolerate. They can tolerate. Okay. So we increase the doses until they get the diarrhea, which right. is, is the limited effect. Yeah, exactly. Then we go down a little okay. bit. So okay. that's, that's what we do. Super. Um, just because of time constraints, I want to make sure we get two other key issues in here. I know there's more in the paper, and I, again, I encourage the, the uh, listener to read his paper. Let's talk about this concept of idiopathic VF. And, and we'll make an assumption that you've gone through all the appropriate management things and nothing turns up positive. And so now you're left with this idiot. So how do you handle that person acutely when they come in and again, long term? Okay, so I personally make a distinction between the notion of unexplained cardiac arrest, which is a patient that came with VF okay. and everything is normal. Yes. And the true idiopathic VF, which is the same as an unexplained cardiac arrest, but you have the mode of onset of VF during a recurrence and is, 
and it, it is triggered by a short couple PVC. Okay. That is what I would call idiopathic VF because okay. that's, that's the term we've been used for, for, for many years. For that particular patient with short couple initiation of VF, quinidine will work. Again, quinidine. Quinidine will work. Same dosing schema. Exactly okay. the same. Um, you know, my mentor, Bernard Belassen, used to treat VF survivors with idiopathic VF with quinidine without the ICD. Uh, I, he told me that many times, how I misused the ICD in those patients. So, yes, I know that. So, <laughs> that is how effective the drug is. Yeah. It is very effective. Yeah. It's like uh, a, a drug that finally met a disease to treat, the, the short <laughs> couple VF. It doesn't right. matter if it's Brugado, idiopathic VF, or the Purkinje VF that we described in the post MI patients also. Right. So let's go back to that though. So you see a short couple started, uh, and, and I know what you mean, and that's well, nice pictures of that, by the way, in your article. Um, and then you would obviously go to quinidine first. Uh, when, when do you decide to try to take that person to the lab, uh, knowing the quinidine might work, right? And you're gonna probably put an ICD in them, most likely. But when do you say, maybe I should take them to the lab and look for, look for a focus and get rid of it? Well, it, that's the decision you should probably take before you start quinidine, if they have enough PVCs in between, yeah. short couple PVCs between the VF events, then okay. you have a very fair chance of, of curing, at least for a while, the events by ablating the Purkinje-related PVCs, the, their, their, the short couple PVCs. Once you are convinced that they have the same morphology of the PVC initiating the VF, okay. if they have enough in between, then his best chance is to go into the lab and and do the ablation. In your experience with these, um, is it usually one site you find? I don't mean the post of my patients in these, or do you find multiple Purkinje foci? Well, we, we usually have find, well, we haven't done many because we go for, for quinidine. quinidine. <laughs> right. Uh, but in those who did, it was, a, a, it was a single zone. I think Hesegir now uh, recommends doing uh, a broader area of ablation. Okay. Uh, not just the spot, even if you got already of the PVCs with a single ablation spot, then do a wider area to make sure other Purkinje fibers or the same Purkinje fiber doesn't get an exit, okay. et cetera. So, like so let me ask you something terminology-wise. You know, I, you and I have both been around a while. Maybe I've been around a little longer. But is this the, is this the same thing that uh, Philippe Cabell used to call short-coupled torsade? Is that, are we dealing with the same syndrome? Uh, we, uh, I think it is exactly the same. Okay. It's just two diseases with different names. And it's, it's very funny in a way that even today, many years after the description, if you have a case report that the authors call the patient short couple variant of torsati, <laughs> we treat them with verapamil. But he showed that initial report, verapamil didn't work. Well, it kind of worked. It didn't, it didn't work very well. It didn't but, work very well, but it was, right. was the drug that appeared to be most effective in right. that. So even today, 20 years later or 30 years later, if the author calls the, the disease short couple variant of Torset, he will use Verapoli. Okay. And if the author calls this, the, his event in the hepatic VF, he will use quinidine. <laughs> I'm going to, because of time constraints, we only can get maybe one more. And this is the one that bothers me the most. Not when they have an event, but when they don't. So let's talk about the early repolarization. First of all, let's talk about, I, do you handle that, the one who has VF, the same way you handle the quote-unquote idiopathy? Yes. Okay. The, the same way. Okay. Yeah. So let me talk to you about the more troubling thing. I know both of us probably get these as referrals. Asymptomatic patient, no family history of cardiac arrest or sudden death. And they have some repolarization. I just, what do you do with those people? I just look the other way around. <laughs> I just look the other way around. Right. But you're famous for saying something. Uh, yeah. you're, you're, tell us your famous comment. The electrocardiogram of the patient always gets looks worse <laughs> once the patient is dead. <laughs> and, and, and that I, is I, I always quote you on that comment. It's really true, right? It's true. But anyway, I will look the other look way. Look the other right? way. Well, well, Sammy, this has been a great run through. And again, to the listening audience, you've got to read this paper. It's really a wonderful paper. Thanks so much uh, for joining us, Sammy. Thank you.